I know Sappho, but I'm not aware of the name of the other entity that is giving the poem. Oh, there's several by now, but, <laughs> but I mean, the, when you book. told it first. Aphrodite, the um, world goddess. But no, the dark one that was powerful. I couldn't relate to who that was powerful. Uh, maybe I, I don't remember talking. Okay, about, we'll just, I don't remember talking about Eros, but Eros, as opposed to Aphrodite, uh, has come in as not a dark figure, but more like a more more like compulsion than um, Eros. I think I think I keep referring <coughs> or Savo or somebody keeps referring to Eros as as um, sometimes naughty or sometimes. Um, just unpleasant. It's like I didn't bring love, but there's a, a sense of like sex without love, maybe, or or or, or obsessive, or um, Aphrodite is for me in these poems tends often to be as much the kind of eros that's a glue that glues everything to everything else. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe even. The interreaction between molecules keeps the table from letting my hand go through it. Drag. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but but um, Eros doesn't have that quality. He's ruthless. Not so much. Not so much for play. I know Hillman tried to make us all believe that Eros was wonderful, but I don't know. Hillman tried to make us believe different things at different times. <laughs> <laughs> but I would like to ask you about the one that that you were hearing about the storm, before the storm came. Mm -hmm. I didn't bring those poems, I'm sorry, but yeah. But what's the name of the being that you, you said it, and I wasn't hearing correctly. Oh, the, the being itself, L-O-B-A, Loba. L-O-B-A. Mm -hmm. She Wolf. The She Wolf, yeah. Yeah, she was I remember that. Thank you. Yeah, that's been being written a long, long time. Yeah. Like, uh, Tony had a question for you over here on the right. Okay, Tony well, had a question. Actually, uh, I'm reading a great Buddhist New Year song. Uh huh? And it's, it's an incredible poem. And it's... I don't remember that poem. Here, why don't you bring it up here? Why don't you read it to me? Tell me, I'll read parts of it at the beginning of it so I remember it. Are we up there? Or we you can be wherever you are. Okay. And then, I mean, it's an amazing poem, and, and um, oh, I, I think I'm. Why don't you begin the beginning? Okay, the Buddha's New Year song. I saw you in green velvet, wide, full sleeves, seated in front of a fireplace. Yeah, I know that poem. Yeah, what was your question about it? I'm trying. I mean, I might be a more of a philosopher and a, and a kind of a more prosaic. So I'm trying to, I, I kind of like I know what it means, but I can't say what it means. Okay. Did and it's not just the sound, the, the, the imagery is so profound. And then there's also references, Mahakala, this, this God who protects the Dharma, and he's black, so everything comes into him. And then he, he confronts Shiva, the Hindu God. And then all the, the stars turn into mirrors, and then the mirrors will all break. So it's it's a it's an amazing um, but mm -hmm. and it's about purpose, our, our purpose. Would you yeah. do us the New Year's song, so it's probably got something of the New Year's resolution resolution idea of purpose okay. too, huh? I don't know that. that so a long time ago. <clears throat> I saw you in green velvet, wide full sleeves, seated in front of the fireplace, our house made somehow more gracious, and you said, there are stars in your hair. It was truth I brought down with me to this sullen and dingy place that we must make golden, make precious and mythical somehow. It is our nature. And it is truth that we came here, I told you, from other planets where we were, where we were lords. We were sent here for some purpose. The golden mask I had seen before that fitted so beautifully over your face did not return, nor did that face of a bull you had acquired amid northern peoples, nomads, the Gobi Desert. I did not see those tents again, nor the wagons infinitely slow on the infinitely windy plains, 
So cold, every star in the sky was a different color. The sky itself a tangled, tangled tapestry, glowing. But almost, I could see the planet from which we had come. I could not remember then what our purpose was, but remember the name Mahakala in the dawn. In the dawn confronted Shiva, the cold light revealed the mind-born mind -born worlds as simply that. I watched them propagated, flowing out, or more simply, one mirror reflecting another. Then broke the mirrors. You were no longer in sight, nor any purpose. I stared at this new blackness. The mind-born worlds fled, and the mind turned off. A madness or a beginning. So you wanted to know how that ar I arrived in peace. So I can't tell you too much about it except, yeah, um, I, I remember the evening. I remember the occasion. And um, it was 1930, I mean 60, it was 1964, 65, 1965, so written a long time ago. And um, did you ever do either as a game or in a writing class that exercise where you take a partner and you both stare at each other and watch all the different faces that form around the other person's eyes? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's kind of, everything is reforming and reforming around the certain things. Alan Marlowe's eyes, I was married to a man named Alan Marlowe at the time. The statue of Shiva that we had, which was, I don't remember that name, the name of the Columbus half, male and half female? Oh, or or, or, or the, or the not, nor, or anyway. or the something. Yeah. Half male, half female. Yeah, one side. So he's got a he, she, she, S slash E, has a beautiful breast and a hip like a woman. The other side is male. That was, that was the, uh, one of the other things. The whole room was constellating as tents or not, and so on and around. Those two things mostly. And I would not be, it wouldn't be um, a complete picture of this thing, I'm guessing, but I'm, I'm pretty sure this is so. Um, that these images were, were were forming and reforming, and the catalyst was probably probably LSD, which was very fresh in those days for me. And anyway, it had only been it was 65, so it yeah. only it's been in my legal. world for about. Hmm? It was still legal, and it yeah. had better quality. And it was very good. Yes, I got it from Tim Moon, but <laughs> but um, but that wasn't the point. I think it was partly the, the newness of it, and it was very. It was strong and not messed up with, not messed with. So what you got was just the essence of what it could be. So, but I was accustomed to be way before there was any, in my life, any LSD to stare at a wall and um, write down all what I saw, all the images that I saw. There was, a, I wrote a book called The Calculus of Variation that I almost brought tonight, but I didn't bring it because there were too many books piled on top of it. I couldn't get it down easily, but, um, and I figured I had it, but um, when I worked, the calculus var a variation was, a, I don't know, off the wall project I gave myself, maybe a year or two after that class where everything had a form, but um, I wrote a section of the book for each of the eight trigrams of the I Ching, and um, before I would start, first of all, this prelude began, and I wrote that. I don't know, I was trying to see if I remembered any of it, but I don't really. And so then the prelude was short, and then I was going to do the first trigram, which is the creative heaven, it's masculine, the image is a dragon. And before I started it, I spent several weeks, I can't guess how long now, I don't know, um, living in the correspondences of that, dressing in what I would have thought of would be the right colors, um, you know, dealing with as many dragon images as I could, or finding ways to sort of relate to them, or just collage them, that kind of thing. And in many, many ways, worked with that. If without, um, like I would get dressed with that one, think all day, I'm wearing, I am wearing the clothes of the first, I just do it, I mean, the music, I would pick music that 
for the day when I was doing it, I always had that. And on my hour, we always had music on, whether it was classical or jazz or, or with later rock and roll too. Whatever it was, it was music always in the background. So all those things would happen for maybe weeks, and then one day it would be time to start writing. And I had this typewriter that was electric, so it was really fast for the time. Yeah. And I would type away, looking at the wall in front of me and trying not to stay with an image at the point, you know, when you're writing down a dream and all of a sudden you're trying to make it make sense or come to a conclusion and you know, oh, now I'm making it up. This was a dream. And then trying to drop the, to each part of it, each thing I saw before became other than what I was just seeing. So one thing after another. At first I could only write like that for about 20 minutes because it takes a lot of some meditation. It takes a lot of, um, of staying with itness. But over time, it got to be like I could do about two hours. And so I would write the section, and when somehow I knew the section was done, oh, and there would be things that I didn't like, and so I told myself I'd fix it later. Of course, later I found out I couldn't fix anything because it was the way it was. But anyway, when that one was somehow I knew it was finished, I'd drop the thing, not read it. I never read it over. And then after a while, I started going toward things that would go with the second try around after a few weeks. So it was like a way of, I was writing something, but I was kind of like embodying it each time. And um, so, yeah, I, I don't know, what, how, how did I come up with this to talk about right now? But it's, it was an example of something or other. But anyway, yeah, that, that I did this whole book that way. And when it was finished, okay, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start fixing this, you know. I haven't forgotten all my lessons from Jimmy or whatever. So I sit down with it, and I can't touch anything. All the ways I tricked myself into writing these awkward things down, or not embarrassing, or just bad writing, I thought, or what, too, too overblown, or this. Okay, I, I had accepted it was what it was, and then and further than that, James Lachlan, I sent it to him, the New Direction said, yes, we'll assign you an editor. And I said, I'm sorry. I wrote to, I knew him when I wrote, Dear Jane, you know, this is in the nature of a received text. I can't do anything with it. He said, I'm sorry, but we can't publish it. I said, okay. And years and years later, I published it myself. I was doing it, I was publishing myself then, but we were in the middle of moving from the East Coast to the West Coast. So it took a while to get around. So the first time we tried it out here, um, we found a, published a, a printer who then ran off with the money to Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> so then we tried again, it finally came out, but it took a long time. And so uh, that was another another way of writing something we see. Like you set your intention, make a proposal to yourself, you want to do this, and then how would I go about it? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a place where doing a magical ritual and doing a piece of art kind of begin to overlap. And I know that it started to happen for many people around that time in different ways. So. Oh, I was going to talk about two things, and that be, maybe that will be the end of it, maybe. Um, I, said, I talk too much. <laughs> I talk We're too much. I it. write too much. I'm over loving it. But anyway, um, yeah, I was going to talk and write, talk about things that. Um, you, you, you write them when you hear them, but it can take weeks or months. I don't know how long I wrote it took to write. I have a part of a piece for Lola in the third book, which isn't published at all, that I wrote um, when, May, when Giuliani was mayor of New York. <laughs> he, when he closed the museum, the Brooklyn Museum at one point because there was a, a painting of the Virgin Mary that had elephant dung on it. Oh, oh. Shit on it. So rather than, he, he didn't even take the piece down, he shut the museum. The show was no good. <laughs> and then it, it got me so mad, I thought, Our Lady of Elephant Song, sure. And I, I got so mad and I kept being mad for weeks, I think, because I would wake up at night, I'd write some few lines of this, which I'd later find in the morning. I went, often didn't even remember getting up and doing it, but I'm not going to read you this thing because it's. 13 pages, I've read it once. It took a half hour, had a reading, I mean, poetry reading. But 
I'll read the very beginning of a piece here and there. <clears throat> okay, so it has an epigram. The female principle of the world is my appeal in the extremity to which I have come. William Carlos Williams. Our Lady of the Elephants, Our Lady of the Armadillos, Our Lady of the Water Moccasins, Our Great White Lady of Sharks, Our Lady of Mandrake, Our Lady of the Bayou, Our Lady of Subways, Our Lady of Blind Cats, Our Lady of Albino Alligators, Our Lady of Desperados, Our 300 Pound Lady who sits on stoops in a house dress in the summer night. Goes on and on, Our Lady of Tornado Toes, Our Lady of Piss and Sweat, Our Lady of HIV Come, Our Lady of the African Vulture Who Waits for Dead Children. Turning some pages, Our Lady of Maggots, Our Lady of the Killing Fields, Our Lady of Auschwitz, Our Lady of Philadelphia, Our Lady of Patterson, Our Lady of Junkies, Our Lady of Second Story Men, our Lady of Car Thieves, Our Lady of Casinos, Our Lady of the Federal Reserve, <laughs> Our Lady of the World Bank, and goes on, Our Lady of Horse Shit, Our Lady of Elephant Shit, and goes on and on and on. Our Lady of the Taliban, Our Lady of Adultery, Our Lady of the Jujuka, Our Lady of the Albigensians, Our Lady of the Ni Nicene Heresy, our Lady of Cats, Our Lady of Ferrets, Our Feral Lady, Our Lady of the Wild, Our Lady of the Tarantella, Our Lady of the Call to Prayer, moving on, Our Lady of the Rainforest, Our Lady the Rider, Our, our, our Possessed Lady, Our Lady the Rider, Our Lady the Ridden, Our Lady Oya, Our Lady Colleen, Our Lady of Genetic Engineering, our Lady of Biological Warfare, going down some ways. Our Lady of Compton, Our Lady of Cleveland, Our Lady of Watts, Our Lady of Sumatra, going day pages back on. Our Lady Fatima, Our Lady who was boss of Mohammed, Our Lady Mohammed's wife, Our Lady of Lost Iraqi Children, Our Lady of Murdered Afghani Wedding Parties, Our Lady of Broken Cuneiform Tablets, our Lady of Lost Ancient Tongues, Our Lady, O oh, oh Lady of Largest Heart, Our Lady the Begin, Our Lady the Endura, the Our Lady Consolamentum, Our Lady the Foliated Whiteness, Our Lady the Breached Garden, Our Lady the Broken Wall, Our Lady of Battlements, Our Lady in Armor, Our the Our Lady the Red Stone by Dark Menstrual Blood, Our Lady the Red Tree in the Crucible, Our Lady of Monsabur, Our Lady of Blossom, Our Lady of Venice and Damascus, Our Lady the Hidden Cup, Our Lady the Palette on My Floor, Our Lady Billy, Our Lady Bessie, Our Lady of Oratorios, Our Lady of Secret Syllables, our Lady of Awe, Our Lady of Clean and Tree. There's hope for 13 pages. So that was, I would get up my right, I, I was mad, right? I got mad and I write to, I don't know what I was dreaming, I probably was dreaming about. Not and yet I, published. Hmm? Not yet published. No, I have to part of book three. Oh, for us, maybe. And I mean, these pages are all out of order. I would give you this copy. They don't have page numbers on them, of course. <laughs> But um, yeah, that was one, and then one, one other thing, and maybe then we'll have a question or two and I'll stop. Um, writing at other people's readings or at music concerts or at anything, it's just very wonderful. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's different all the time. When I'm writing at, at jazz but I'm, or, some, or music generally, I'm not waiting to, I'm not writing about or with or anything else, but I'm waiting for it to take me out of there to someplace else. Mm -hmm. And what I'm reporting on half the time, I have no idea, you know, I could be hung up between two planets or some other galaxy. I don't even know, but I'm just writing what's in front of my eyes again, even though it's dark. And I'm listening very hard to the music, actually. But 
But then if readings, poetry readings, something else, sometimes you can write poetry readings if they're bad readings and just make great poems out of two of their words or something, you know? <laughs> it's like, I, just, I do this game where, okay, I'm going to take the next word, I write it down, and the moment I lift my pen, I'm going to take the next two words. And then I do that, and I make these different shapes of poems. That's fun. But this is what there's, sometimes you write just because something is so powerful that it's waking up something and you need to write. And this is one of those, it's three poems. What, was his, what book was he reading? I think he had just gotten Mysterios. Michael yeah. McClure had just gotten a book out, I don't remember which one. And I, because I called it Three Poems Written at a Michael McClure Reading. <laughs> and I said to him, he said, what do you mean you weren't listening to me? <laughs> <laughs> I was listening real hard to you, Michael. So the titles are, are a couple of words of his that he's trying to first one is just Butterfly Garden title. Powerful and elegant as any rocker in the height of our youth, he raises his left hand to steady the book. Both hands shake. The light was never more brilliant. Decayed apples or the dream of Datura might be the door Mary Shelley pushes open in her skull so Percy and the child can rest a while. Was, he was reading a poem, Michael was, was reading a poem he had dedicated to Phil Lamantia, who had just died. Philip Lamantia. And the words of our you split, you split beauty. The substrate is so brilliant. The substrate is neither fire flowing in rivers out. I'm sorry, let's do that. The substrate is so brilliant. You have to put your blacks on. The substrate is nether fire flowing in rivers out toward the dark. How could it be otherwise? The substrate is so violent, tender, so calm. So I think those are all the things I want to throw your way, and I'm happy to discuss a, a question or two, and then I'm going to go home and probably do some writing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I wonder if you talk a little bit about your own um, embodiment when you're writing, like maybe when you're looking at the wall or other times when you're receiving, what's happening in your body and how does, the, how does what's happening in your body respond to what's happening on the page? I don't really, I, at that point I'm not aware of what's going on in my body. Uh -huh. Robert Duncan once said that if he wished he could catch the moment before all that started for him because he's sure that there's some kind of chem biochemical change that goes on or something. But I, I, I'm trying to think. I think there's kind of like a, I, my and my before feelings are more like total restlessness, which sometimes will man manifest for weeks and on and off it go away. And I become a person, and then it happens again. And it's kind of like sometimes with some pieces, the earliest pieces I received were I consciously invited. Were there was a play called Murder Cake, Murder Cake, and. Um, I was doing it, I was playing with chance operations at that point. And I wrote all the first, the first word of each line down. They were all taken from six books by six women novelists. France, Austin, I can't remember who. And so I, I, did, the, I did with two dice how many, how long was the speech going to be? And then I would pick who was going to speak it. Well, weren't all the men at all? There's Richard Lovelace, Dante, Charles Harold, Olympia, Emma, and I'm leaving somebody out. There were six of them, anyway. So I got all those words down, like, like you're making a, a score, or you're getting ready to make a musical score. And then I started writing. And I wrote till I got to the end of the line, knowing I would include that next first word. Done. And I did it as fast as I could without thinking about it. And this thing happened, which has been performed many times, and I really like it, but while I was writing it, 
the physical, what I'm talking about is the physical manifestation was, I can't stand this thing, I can't sit here another second. I have, it's like when you're, sometimes when you're, you're like on the edge of really dropping into a good meditation, but you, you're, you're sure it's said you should get up and go to the bathroom. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and so it's like, squirm, squirm, and I can, I catch those when those are happening, and they're different for everybody, not everybody gets squirming, but people get, some of them get bored or, or embarrassed, or they're sure they left the kettle on when they were gonna make tea before for themselves, all of those things. And I ask my students always to watch it, to watch so they can figure out what theirs are, so they don't buy into them and lose their writing. But, um, but yeah, so I, I know about that, but I'm not sure what's happening while I'm writing. Because when I get back, if my, my legs could be asleep or, you know, something like that. And, but it's not, that's not exceptional to my when I'm writing, because that's like that can happen when I'm studying, so I just don't have to budge. It's like, I haven't learned, you know, not to, I haven't learned not to um, get sciatica by getting up and stretching every 40 minutes, like they said. But, so I can't, do you have any sense of where I go, or what happens to my body? Uh, you're there. I, I'm, I'm there. It seems like you're somewhere, but not there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, your, your concentration is like a force of nature. And I just try to help circumstances so that you not be disturbed. Okay, so I, I can't tell you more. I wish I could. I have a question. <clears throat> the word lineage and transmission is used in different contexts, mm -hmm. especially these days. Um, as a living, breathing poet, among other things, um, what can you say about the force of what resonates for you in those two words in terms of your poesis? Okay. Um, I've been easily trace my lineage in poetry, you know, as almost as easily as I could in um, drama. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I meant it in any sense of it, not just poetic lineage. But... Any sense of it. What does that mean, any sense of it? Whatever comes to mind. Mm -hmm. Well, in, you know, I, I know, um, first the poems started when I was seven, they were not very good poems, obviously, but they were but they started because of an urgency for me that I wanted to remember something. There was something I wanted to remember. The poem wasn't about it, that would have made sense, but seven years I think about that. But to this day, if I read that poem to myself or think of it, or I can I do remember everything about that night. So that's an odd little thing. Lineage for me began um, with my grandfather, who was an anarchist, teaching me, reading, reading to me from Giordano Bruno and me going with him to talks in the park when he would uh, make speeches against World War II happening when I was, I was born in 34 and didn't get over here so fast. But um, lineage, other than that, in high school, uh, my, 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 poet, my poetry lineage or learning how to write started with reading Keats's letters. Mm -hmm. And they were like, they, they were all the textbook on that I needed for years. And he was saying something about light at one point, and, and, and light and meant and light, mm -hmm. and we didn't finish that. But I, re I have an essay, it's probably an amplifying it's in one of those Naropa, uh, the first two Naropa anthologies. Um, um, not, 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 not the Naropa Institute put out two anthologies on writing early. And it's called Light in Keats. Mm. And it's a thing that I was looking at and exploring of, of there's a way that certain things you do with vowels can make light come through the page to you, mm -hmm. or turn on the light feeling in your mind, feeling the more light is on in the room. Just the way um, a painter can do it by the way he overlays, or, or she overlays, or under all the different mm -hmm. transparencies of colors that are and are transparent. So the light seems to come through the flesh out to you. And so on. So there's. So I did write an essay about light that might be. And it was a poetics essay, anyway. Um, <coughs> so that then was Keats, and then um, the rest of it. 
was pretty much ABC of reading and pound mm -hmm. stuff and going to see pound and St. Elizabeth's and um, all of that stuff. And then, and then besides that, I think in terms of writing, it was my, it was just um, peers and friends, you know, I, because I really, although they were my superiors, I learned lots of previous generation, and I learned a lot from Mike, especially Olson and Duncan. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't think of them as so much mentors as buddies, you know, mm -hmm. really. and that's, that's what we all were. I mean, what, we, what they needed more than me, because people were, and that is, I mean, help, there's no help to the person who's being deemed that, and it's no help to the demon either. <laughs> Because <laughs> you're not going to find out what you need to know. So poetry lineage was relatively e easy, but really, I was really blessed to have what I had. But then the other thing is the Dharma lineage started with Suzuki, and really, and um, we just experientially started with Shunryu Suzuki. When, when I first met him, I decided whatever that guy does, I want to do it. And he could have been an apple picker who would have gone off and picked apples forever. And, you know, and then Trungpa and then Lamatarjan. And those were my main teachers. So, again, you know, lineage is hard and fast, but it's not, you know, I have a little piece of paper that says I'm in the direct lineage with Dogen <laughs> Zenji. It goes from Dogen all the way down to Suzuki to me. Mm -hmm. And I go, oh my God, put that piece of paper away again. <laughs> Think about it another time. It's scary, you know. There's Many a sense of obligation? What's no, the oh my God? Of, of, what's the oh my God is, the, yeah, not obligation so much as you're carrying something you have to, you, you need, yeah, it's obligation. It says you have to bring it forward for, for mm -hmm. the next bunch of people in your own way, not, not their way, of course, but your way. Is that an oh my God or sometimes an oh boy? No, I don't know, boy. I'm busy. <laughs> I mean, there's too many things to happen at once. Yes. The poems. Are... So when you're when you reach a certain age, work remains as unfortunate, or maybe more unfortunate than ever. But your body doesn't have the resource. Mm -hmm. There's things are, that there are demanding to be written that I don't have the fingers to type, or I don't have the back to sit at the machine, or, and so on. So it becomes. Um, Overwhelming in some ways, yeah. Had you thought some time to, um, listening to what you just said, to somehow memorialize a list or a lines of, um, here's a bit of what I imagine I will never write? No. Why would you do that? <laughs> just as a sort of tease for the future? <laughs> I don't want to come back and write again. <laughs> what do you want to come back and do? I, uh, that's a good question. I want some time off. <laughs> I want to go sit on all of this. <clears throat> Fully open. I want people to teach me for a while. I remember once we were driving through the country and my youngest son, who was about seven, was looking out the window of the car. We were living up in Marshall. And he said, if I was Suzuki Roshi, I'd take a vacation and come back as a deer. Fantastic. <laughs> Out of the mouth of the <laughs> Might you just, just one more thing. Um, when you visited Pound at mm -hmm. St. Elizabeth's, was that the first time you had actually met with him? Or had you met with him? No, previously? I didn't write you to him. No, but I mean in person. Yeah, yeah. And so my question is, it's kind of an embodied question to have that thing continue. And of course, it's difficult and impossible. Um, was there some sense, perhaps a wrong word, of being in the living presence of Pound that amplified, changed, or augmented what up until that point had been for you, Pound, via uh, letters and writing? It changed well, well, something, something the, the living presence, actually being able to speak or be in his physical presence. How yeah. did that how did that what? How did that change or affect your sense of what pound meant for you? I don't know that it did. Okay. Yeah, I, I can't see how it would actually. Was I mean, he fairly lucid? Oh of course he was totally lucid and he was like stealing the food off the table at lunch so that me and my, my girlfriend who came down with me and the people who were at the house I was staying at, who were Sherry Martinelli, his 
mm -hmm. the painter and her, her lover, that we had enough to eat. I mean, he, we would, I would visit and he'd hand me these bags of sausages, <laughs> and bags of sausages, and, and uh, um, whatever the fruit salad was of the day, and say, poets have to eat. <laughs> You know, things like that. But yeah, it was totally lucid. We talked about everything under the sun, all the things I had questions about. There were a few other people there. Um, you know, Dorothy, his wife, was sitting there making tea and handing out little cakes and some cheese. And it was like, it was like he was um, receiving at home in a way. Mm. Mm. What was it he said uh, when he, he looked at some of your poems? Well, the first time I sent him work, I was like, I wasn't even, I don't know, I think I pretty much, pretty, I was when I was 18 or so, sent him some poems at the, at the hospital and he said, he wrote me back, postcard, they seem underlined to me to be well written, but, big but, okay. no one ever much use as critic of younger generation. Mm. And it's been so helpful to me all my life because I always remember, like, I go, God Almighty, this kid is writing horrible, horrible abstractions. And then I talk with that kid in my class who might be 40 years old or 30 at that point and say, you know, I think you know, shouldn't use a word like freedom. We don't know what it needs it. And then she, oh, I'm doing, I'm writing the, the way that my friends write their rap, mm -hmm. and you know, to, maybe to all of them it means something more concrete than it means to me, you know. Or maybe it's a, they're hearing it with all different ears, for sure. So I have learned to back off, and I never teach by telling people at all how to write. Mm -hmm. And that no one ever much use as critic of younger generation. Mm -hmm. So that means all, only people I can criticize right now are in, Michael McClure, <laughs> and Sparring David Meltzer, and, right, exactly. So, yeah. I'm going to see if I can articulate this clearly. I heard you say when you were joking about coming back, you know, in the next life, someone else would teach you, and I, I feel like the impact of your work on young women, and like, I mean, from like junior high on, is so much the idea that you, there's some feeling about this real intellectual pioneer in you, in a female body, in a female form. And I'm wondering if that, do you think that that, I don't know, something about the singularity of that role has kept your work from being boring? Because your work is never boring. I mean, it's always so fresh. It's like, I don't know what I don't that, know. you know, there's some things I wrote really with that in mind that I really wanted, I really wrote the girl, the younger woman, and that, especially my prose book, Recollections of My Life as a Woman. Because, yeah, because, but um, I don't know what, you know, I don't know, I don't think about how is my work going to be fresh. I know that it's always different, and one of the things I learned from Jean reading Jean Cocteau was very early, I read something where he said that artists have to be like acrobats. You have to be one jump of what they figured out that you can do, because if you let them tell you that this is, oh, the way you wrote blah, blah, blah is great, you might get trapped there and keep writing that. Mm -hmm. And I think about when my friends, Klein wanted to write through color work, the, the abstract black and white painter, um, the gallery, his gallery wouldn't carry it. They wouldn't touch it. Hmm. He had to sell it for, for a song, really, he didn't carry it, put him money, but he sold it like $5,000 for piece to friends. Because, he, you know, you're a black and white abstract painter, that's what you are. So not getting caught by those things. That's maybe that part that keeps your work fresh. You know? And if, if you're writing something and it reminds you of something else you've write, written, it starts, it's time to maybe, I don't know, do some reading of some new thing that you never, I, I figure that all the things I say about them, I don't really understand that or I know nothing about, I know nothing about blah, 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 you know. Um, just read a poem by Mahmoud Darwish, he's writing about meeting um, some some uh, some other work poet from the New World. He meets this poet at, at a world conference. And poet says, here, poet says, um, oh, he says a poet, do you know anything about Arab poetry? And the guy says, not a thing. And he doesn't, 
and but the way he says it and the way he writes it, and, uh, Darvish is indicating that he doesn't, that whoever that other poet was, wasn't planning to find out anything either. <laughs> but all the, all the things that you know that you, you, don't, you don't know anything about are invitations to the, to the voyage for later. So you keep, I try to keep those in mind, like, oh, you know, never really listen to blah, blah, blah. Or maybe you find somebody who knows about it, a whole bunch about it. And, and I know tons and tons about roots music that I don't, and I keep pumping it whenever, whenever I, uh, records are being played, you know, things to listen to, especially, but also things to see, you know. I try to see lots of kinds of movies I've never seen before, or things like that. Because fresh means you shamelessly borrow and borrow from and call on with a visiting card all the other artists you can think of, especially ones you have not paid attention to before. You know, you might get disappointed, but sometimes you're not. Yes, Lisa, perhaps the last question. Last question. Uh, Why does Diane spill stuff on the table? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, my question is, uh, you, you said something uh, earlier about uh, considering it a received text. I'm wondering if there is a form that some receptions take that's not the poem that you write. So a form that what? That, that, the, that your reception uh, takes that, that's not the poem that you, that you write. A form that my reception. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. So are there are, are there other well, forms? Well, yeah, I think so because if you're an anarchist, you're going to receive people the way they are. You know, I mean, is that the kind of thing you mean? It's yeah. Just in daily well, life. Well, I'm just wondering if there are any f other forms, uh, other medium, uh, me uh, media that. I paint and I paint watercolor because all my mistakes are not mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> so that's you know, that's being. Re I mean, it's what the painting wants, not what you want, right there. You know. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, yeah, I was talking, my, my little granddaughter was just taught in school that, or by her mother, that um, watercolor is very, very hard. <laughs> when, she, when, when, my, when my little daughter went out of the room, I told my granddaughter, it's hard for people who, want, who know what they want to paint, but if they just let the painting, if they just paint what the painting wants to paint, then they're okay. But then it's easy. We, we can do some of that over the phone. We can, I'll paint and you paint. And she goes. On that note. Yes. Thank, Thank you, you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. And in a great tradition that you and I know very well, may you please come back again and again, if it corresponds to an auspicious movement of your heart. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Hope everybody's work goes great forever. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was lovely.